Hi, this is the second part of the lesson on Walther's Law and diachronism. And what I want to do in this lesson is look at how uh, this idea applies in reality. And to do this, I want to look at um, a unit of rock called the Bridport Sands. This is a, a picture uh, of this rock, of uh, this unit of rock uh, outcropping um, on the south coast of England. Let's have a look at the rock type. These are the Bridport Sands. The BGS describes them as being grey micaceous silts. So that's silt stone with flakes of mica um, deposited within it. You can see that there are some prominent beds that stick out. These are better cemented sandy layers within the unit. The rock itself weathers to a yellowy brown colour. Uh, there would be a small iron content in there that's um, oxidising to create that um, colour. It's a very distinctive deposit. It means that wherever this is laid down across southern England, it's recognisable. Because it's a marine deposit, we're going to find fossils in it. And it's those fossils that give us the key to its age. The Bridport Sands were deposited uh, during the Jurassic period uh, in the Tuarshan Epoch, uh, sort of lower down in the uh, Jurassic. And they've been interpreted as having been laid down uh, as a marine sandbar. Um, so you had uh, a sea uh, that was um, shallowing um, with a lagoon behind the sandbar and a deeper sea on the other side. Because of its age, because it's uh, from the Jurassic period, it's possible to use ammonites as zone fossils to date uh, these marine sandstones really very accurate. So what I want us to do is to see whether we can test um, how well Walther's law applies to the Bridport Sands by using uh, the zone fossils uh, that we find them uh, in the deposits of this sort of characteristic bed that we find across southern England. Now for this you're going to need your A3 handout on the Bridport Sands You'll also need um, the list of uh, ammonite zones from this period. Okay, let's have a look at locations first of all. You have data that shows um, the uh, lithology and um, fossil zones in these locations. So from the south, we have Bridport, then Yeovil, the Mendips, Bath. Chip in Sudbury, Watton under Edge in the Cotswolds, and finally Cheltenham. What I'd like you to do is I'd like you to mark these locations on your map. Okay, having got those labelled up, these are uh, the Ammonite zones. Now you don't need to worry about learning what these zones are, you won't be asked that. But you could be asked uh, to use some of the data uh, that they help us to generate. You should have a, a sheet uh, to list each of these zones in order. One is the oldest, 12 is the youngest. Okay. Now, what I'd like you to do is use the data in table one uh, to complete uh, this figure. I want you to show the sequence of lithologies um, in each of these six locations, oh, sorry, seven locations across southern England um, in terms of uh, which fossil zone uh, we find those lithologies in. Okay, so press pause and have a go at that now.
Okay. Let's see what we've come up with. If I highlight just the Bridport sands. So these are the sandstone uh, units that we find uh, in each of these locations. We can see from this that this bed isn't the same age in these different places. This is a diachronous unit. It's a lithologically um, similar bed. We can trace the lithology through each of these different locations. Yet that same lithology is being deposited at different in different times in these different places. And there's also a pattern to it. So what I'd like you to do now is describe your interpretation of this. What's actually happening? Think about compass directions. Think about location. Think about changing environments. And then how can this relate to the idea of Walther's Law that we were talking about in the previous lesson? Okay, to conclude then, as we look at sunset over Kimmeridge Bay, uh, where we can see the Bridport Sands uh, outcropping, Walther's Law is um, a way of understanding why we see changes in vertical sequences. As A-level geologists, we can now start to not just think about sedimentary sequences if you like, standing on their own, but how they fit into sort of a wider, maybe even regional picture uh, of environmental change over time. To be able to do this, of course, though, we need really good dating evidence. We can see that in the Bridport Sands. Those zone fossils, those uh, ammonites, really narrowly define uh, the time zones in which these rocks were laid down. You can always ask me any questions about this. I'll see you soon.